How are you? So last week we ended with uh, chapter 4 with Jesus. He was in the boat with his disciples and, and he was asleep in the boat and uh, there was a, a, a storm and the disciples were scared and Jesus woke up after they woke him up because they were scared and rebuked the storm and said, Peace be still. And then he said to them, well, Why do you have such little faith? This week we're going to be starting chapter 5. Father, I pray, God, that you would bless this word. This is your holy word, Lord. I pray that you would feed us from it and nourish us and teach us, God, uh, how we should live our lives and how this word applies to our lives today. And they came over onto the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadareans. And when he had come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. And he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And they were all about two thousand, and they were choked in the sea, and, the, and they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they that went out to, the sea, to see what it was that had been done. And came unto Jesus to see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they saw that it, that it was told them how it befell that he was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray to him to depart from their coasts. And when he was coming to the ship, that he, had been, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee, and hath compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish it in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So here we have the story where Jesus is comes to this coast, he gets out, uh, gets out of the boat, and immediately a man comes running to him uh, that's, that's possessed with demons. And Jesus this, asks this demon, what's his name? And he says, my name is Legion. And I wonder if that was really just because the demon that was talking to him was scared, so he ratted out all the other demons that were inside of the man. Uh, but these demons tormented this man. They, you know, night and day he would be He'd be up, he'd be, you know, he, nobody can tie him up, he'd be able to break those chains, and he would cut himself with stones, and he'd cry in agony, and really while I was reading this, what I was thinking about, you know, more than anything, I'm thinking about how the way this man was living his life, and what these demons were doing to him, it totally reminded me of the leaders of our society, you know, that we, I, th I thought of everybody in Hollywood, I think of everybody in the music industry, all the artists and people that, that today's kids and young men and adults and when we walk into a supermarket, the things that we're listening to, the music, all these people, their lyrics and, and their movies all resemble the kind of behavior that this man that was tormented by demons uh, was exhibiting. You know, there's torment, there's misery, there's hurt, there's restlessness, there's, uh, there's all that kind of stuff. And... I, I think about our society, I think about how really demons and the doctrine of demons are really what's raising up this generation of people. And I think that's why we see such a decline in morality, because the people that we give voice to, we, that we give the, the pulpit to, so to speak, are people that do practice evil and, and do believe in evil lives. You know, like, they're the ones that are on TV, they're the ones who become famous. And the more extreme the things that they do and, and twisted the things that they do, the more coverage they get and the more it gets broadcast. And gets. And then we that don't believe in those things bring that into our house. 
It's a one-way conversation. They share their evil lifestyles with us one way, and even their, the imaginations of their heart, they share it with us, and we might think it doesn't affect us, but it does affect us. So you have, you have this man, Legion, and he, and he cries out, and he says, what, do I, what have I to do with you, Jesus? You know, what, torment me not. And I think of, that's, our, that's our culture today. That's the day that we live in. The attitude towards Jesus today is torment me not. Now, I know that Satanism is alive and well in America and the whole world. And there are professed Satanists that are in Hollywood. And as a matter of fact, um, not out, um, Anton LaVey, his church of Satan was set up in Hollywood. He had actors and actresses that were in his church. And, and uh, he's alive and well. And the whole doctrine of, of Satanism, you know, with Aleister Crawley was... The great commandment in Satanism is do as thou wilt. And that is the attitude of everybody growing up. You know, like, I, I, if, you say, if you say do as thou wilt or you say, you know, whatever makes you happy, what is the difference? Those two things mean the same. We're not supposed to be here living how whatever makes us happy. We're here because God has given us a great life. And our attitudes and our hearts should be to love God and serve God and love others which is not about doing whatever we want. It's about doing what God wants and doing things for other people. It's actually the opposite. But if you think about our culture, you think about the lyrics and music, you know, um, and I could probably name a hundred songs if I just took the time to look through it that, that preach that message of do whatever you want or it's my life, I can have it, you know, whatever. You know, they, there's so many different things. And that's the attitude, that's the mainstream idea on, on living life. As long as you're happy, you can do what you want, you know, no, you know like, it's up to you, it's your life. Um, but this man, this man that was tormented, you know, he, uh, he gets set free, and then the villagers and the, and the people from the town, they come out to see him, and they want to see what happened, and they're actually afraid of Jesus. They're afraid of God. They're not ready to accept God, um, you know, they, ra they would have rather had status quo. And that's, I think that's the way it is also here in America. That we, we like status quo. Um, slowly but surely, things get worse and worse and worse. And nobody's ready to do anything about it. Nobody's ready to put any action behind it or try to change the direction of the culture. And we just kind of, you know, sit, sit around and, and, you know, know that things are getting worse but aren't really putting a lot of action into changing things. And... Um, these people in the, here, they, they like status quo, they, so they wanted Jesus to leave. So Jesus did leave, but the man that was possessed and then got his life back, he came and he wanted to go with Jesus, but Jesus told him, no, go back and tell everybody about me, and that's what the man did. And it said in verse 20 that um, he went to Decapolis and, how great things, and told how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So this man that you know, formerly had no life, and he was a prisoner, and he was miserable, and he was uh, totally possessed by demons, uh, now is completely set free, and now he's, he's actually there delivering other people and sharing the good news, and it's just a testimony to how much power and greatness that God has if you are willing to open up your heart and accept it. So just so you know, a legion... A legion is actually five... It's a, it's a, a Roman... part of a Roman term... And it, it, it's 5,240, or uh, I think 5,240 uh, soldiers. So whether that was how many demons were inside of the man or something close to that, I mean, they went into 2,000 pigs, so we know it was probably at least 2,000 demons. Um, that's a lot of demons that were inside this person. And, and a lot of times what happens with demon possession is, Demons go inside of a person, and sometimes people welcome demons. I mean, that's the truth with, like, witchcraft and Satanism. They want to have demons come into them. And what happens is these demons, they, they, they promise power and all these things, but actually what's happening is the demons are just kind of, like, exercising the people. Like, if you think about a new shoe, how it's uncomfortable when you first put it on, uh, but after time, you wear into it. Well, that's what demons do with people. They wear into people. They, uh, and, and then sooner or later, the people lose themselves, and it's really just the demons running the show. Um, it's all a big deception. But, uh, but we have a society that's... that's uh, the leaders of our society, unfortunately, are, are very involved in darkness. And we have to be careful about what we let into our homes. 
uh, because the kind of evil that had this man cutting himself and living in the, in the mountains and running among the tombs is the same kind of evil that's offered to us every single day when we turn our TV on or we, you know, we put the radio on or we jump on our computer. That's the kind of stuff that we're being fed constantly. It's constantly being emitted to us. So you've got to be aware of that kind of stuff. God, I pray that you would bless this word. I thank you for your holy word. I pray that if, if anybody has... If you would want to speak to anybody about the things that we spoke about today, God, I pray, God, that you would. I pray that nothing would hinder it. I pray that this would not fall on deaf ears. But I pray, God, that we would be awake and aware. And I pray that you would use us, God, uh, and, and that those of us that have been saved by you, Lord, I pray that you would help us to share the truth and the testimony of what you've done in our lives and bring deliverance to those that we care about. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.